Hey, Nina, welcome. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, that's so great, to, great to see you. And uh, and and thanks for joining. And I'll, I'm going to leave it to you guys and I'll step out and, and enjoy. Absolutely. Hey, Nina, warm welcome uh, to you from the Ecosystem Business Summit. Uh, you've had a tremendous career uh, across 25 years, huge impact at SAP, then at Google, and now your CVP uh, Americas uh, for Global Partner Solutions. So congratulations on such an impact on partners uh, throughout your career. It's It's been a lot of fun. And um, it, I think you and Jeff both have been part of that journey with me for many, many years, probably even decades now. So I'm um, really excited about the opportunity to be here today with you. Absolutely. Yeah. And thanks for, uh, fr thanks for that partnership. It takes two to tango, and you've certainly kind of helped everybody in the ecosystem. I'm excited about your role at uh, Microsoft. Um, you know, uh, Microsoft, when we think about partnering, we think about, you know, preeminent companies in the world that really talk and walk the ecosystem, walk all the way from Satya calling it partner first, cloud first company in the same breath. Uh, talk a little bit about Microsoft and its partnering strategy, and especially with AI in this age, uh, if you can talk a little bit more about that strategy, that'd be great. Oh, absolutely. So partners are at the heart of everything that Microsoft does. Um, from over the decades, I think our ecosystem is one of the largest and most thriving ecosystems out there. And that's a testament to how core partners are to everything we do. Whether you're helping to facilitate introduction to new customers through our channels approach and selling our solutions, or you're providing those incredible services that really deliver on the promise of what Microsoft offers from its products, but you're out there innovating with the, the customers on the front lines and making sure that all of the commitments and the dreams of what we want to do together actually come to fruition and to light. Or you are an ISV or you're packaging your IP in some way. We really look to make sure that across all those different areas, whether it's from a telco or distribution or even change management perspective, right? With some of the advisory companies that everyone is excited and an extension of Microsoft and the passion. Um, I, I feel that I joined Microsoft or I actually have to say rejoined Microsoft. This is my second tour of duty here at Microsoft. And when you come back to a company, you absolutely know why you're coming back. Mm -hmm. I'm coming back because uh, the strength of the product, the innovation that Microsoft can provide, AI is just opening the doors in so many ways. We've even just updated our partner program to call it the Microsoft AI partner program because mm -hmm. AI is central to everything we're doing. So it's just a super exciting time. Um, it, we have incredible people, passionate partner being central to everything that we do. Mm -hmm. um, and the promises out there of just making sure that we're innovating with our customers for that next wave of the technology. Absolutely, Nina. And I think, uh, course, uh, you know, if I look at the larger Microsoft strategy and how you're addressing the customer need, you're mm -hmm. going together with mar to market with ISVs. We sure. uh, presented earlier the abnormal security example, but also industries like ABB, for example, where you're co-innovating you're co with them on new offers and then co-selling. It's also GSIs, um, you know, Wipro or Kindrel, for example. Mm -hmm. These are companies that actually use Workspan today to work with uh, with Microsoft. Can you speak a little bit about co-selling, though? It's it's a term that's not kind of very well understood in the industry yet, even though uh, Microsoft kind of innovated and coined on this, you know, I, I think at least seven, eight years ago. Yeah. Talk a little bit about your impressions around co-selling and how you think uh, this can be uh, applied to Microsoft and what message you have for ISVs and GSIs? Yeah, well, um, I, I often joke that co-selling is both my favorite word and my least favorite word out there in the world of partnership, because it's really an umbrella term to talk about the fact that with Microsoft, we really want to work with our partners and jointly sell together to create a seamless experience for our customers. Right. Co-selling means something unique to almost every company. You ask 12 different companies 
what co-selling means and it's different. The definition is different from every company. So I really encourage all, all partners out there that when you're talking about co-selling, you're digging beneath that layer to really understand and set the proper expectations. At Microsoft, uh, co-selling is, is, is absolutely intrinsic to the environment. We have one of the largest sales forces out there in the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so what we do is we not only commit from saying, hey, we're going to bring partners into opportunities and attach uh, partners into those opportunities, which we measure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But it's more than that. We we look at co-selling with where are we going through joint engagement together? So we've identified opportunities and that's where Workspan has offered an incredible way for us to be transparent with each other. Um, and accountable with each other on what we're jointly going after, where we might be endorsing solutions into mm -hmm. customers because they make sense. You mentioned industry, right? We have a whole um, set of, say, healthcare and life sciences or retail core solutions that are applicable to those customers. And we can do so in a way in the customer's voice, the way uh, agitating on the challenges mm -hmm. and the problems they're facing that way. Or we can also create opportunity through what you were just talking about, through marketplace, where we have this phenomenal ability to reach all of our customers in market, showcase all of the ISV solutions that are out there, and then also help the customer with a value proposition of why they might want to select working for us on mm -hmm. Azure, right? Because they'll They'll drive a contract. Microsoft will drive a contract or our resellers will drive a contract with the customers and they can aggregate their Azure spend together across all the different ISV solutions. That's amazing for our purchasing departments and the value proposition to companies on how they can really look to optimize their spend and create the consistency and the inter interoperability of a lot of solutions. Absolutely. And I think you uh, mentioned some co-sell readiness criteria along the Azure marketplace. What are some new requirements that Microsoft has in this space? Sure. Well, I, I, of course, I would encourage anyone that really wants to know all the specifics to, to go to Partner Center and uh, look at the ISV page, right? There's a, there's a whole hub for this. Um, what we have is we have a number of uh, trainings that help you on mastering the marketplace or um, understanding how to set up your solutions as an ISV or a solution IP vendor uh, with success. We have office hours to help support the partners, et cetera. But it's, what's really important is that we're constantly looking at delivering on the value proposition that our customers want, that it's flexible to their needs, and they already understand that the interoperability is there, right? That they're not having to trip over themselves or create that integration at that point. Makes sense, makes sense. And you talk to a lot of chief partner officers, um, especially companies transforming their strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, what is your advice to them as to how should they measure their value uh, to boards? And, you know, uh, talk a little bit about strategies that you have found effective in demonstrating this value. So when I, when I speak with a lot, and you're right, I speak with a lot of partners, and what I find the, is the best question right now is how they're looking at success and how we're looking at success. And I feel like that conversation has changed a little bit, right, is, yeah. is to make sure that we're mutually understanding each other's needs for how we measure that and how that manifests itself. Uh, when What's very common is... It used to be just about revenue a lot of times, right? Mm -hmm. um, and increasingly, it's not just about the revenue. It's yeah. really about the, the satisfaction and the success that the customers are experiencing with the partner solutions. Because we've moved on to uh, these opportunities for companies to actually switch between vendors fairly rapidly and easily. So mm -hmm understanding that lifetime value and really focusing on the ongoing um, commitment as a partner to that business is really mm -hmm. important. I think I also talk besides customer success and their and their happiness with the solution is 
we talk a lot about, are you measuring how much of your data do you have managed and, and uh, readied? That's an important topic right now, in particular, making sure that that's secure on the platform. And this is one of the main reasons why I'm so proud to represent Microsoft in this area, because as the future is unfolding around AI, mm -hmm. AI is only possible if we have all of our data managed and securely um, leveraged on, on the platform for you. So that's, that's pretty critical right now. Um, and the last thing is it's, we've always looked at like, how do you, how do you grow your customers, but bringing on all the net new customers as well. So how that, that, uh, customer expansion is critical in both facets. So I look at both of, all of those things when I talk about it outside of just the revenue side to both companies. Absolutely. So it's a multifaceted, you know, bring uh, many, many uh, aspects, you know, dimensions of that forward in when you kind of present your value back uh, to leaders. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nina, could you give some examples of partners uh, taking advantage of AI or, you know, the Microsoft partnering process uh, as it's central to their business strategy? Sure. I mean, obviously, with our services partners, we're on the front lines agitating on the future of businesses, right? So take a, co a company like BIC, right? And many of us know about yeah. BIC, right? They're stationary, lighters, shavers, you name it, right? Yeah. And um we have a partner like uh, Satori Analytics that yeah. um, brought in Microsoft Azure Cloud. And BIC is able to gather a lot of the data for, uh, from connected shavers to understand specific details regarding skin color and, and uh, hair intensity. And then this data was then able to inform personalized recommendations through mobile apps to guide BIC R&D processes. I mean, you name it, it, it starts to go into product development, customer marketing and penetration in a way that's meaningful to all of us. Yeah. Um, but then if you, I look beyond like what all of our SI partners are doing, the ISV examples I think are what are really exciting right now, right? Um, people are looking at how do we expand? So take someone like, uh, data robot. Mm -hmm. uh, data robot um, is working with us to build a notebook code generator for their data science workbench. And they launched it at Build. Um, and uh, Azure OpenAI services models can now actually be used uh, directly inside data robot, making it easier to build models using code and no code methods and deploy and govern them on Azure Machine Learning. So some of these seamless experiences, like this first one, right? Um, Data Robot uses large language models to help accelerate the adoption of generative AI for businesses of all sizes. But you, I can't tell you, I don't think there is a single software partner out there, mm -hmm. a single ISV that is not exploring how this will make a meaningful difference, whether it's through recommendations, chat, helping to generate emails, um, uh, call center technology, uh, think about a LexisNexis and being able to revamp the entire uh, legal system. Mm -hmm. AI is just opening the world to so many things. Yeah. And our job at Microsoft is to help guide the partners to do that responsibly. What a powerful example, Nina, you shared both across BIC and, um, um, and here with uh, the data robot example. It creates a platform for co-innovation for ISVs, for services partners, and apply them in in transformative ways that we are yet to see. So the, the just the potential mm -hmm. is just game changing here. You know, um, uh, I'm going to get to your team and your advice as a leader in a second. But before that, uh, I want to talk a little bit about your advice to partners. Um, Microsoft is a large ecosystem. They need to stand out. What advice do you have for ISVs and also GSIs and regional SI service partners mm -hmm. both because you look across a whole spectrum of partners. Sure. Uh, how, how, what, what advice do you have for partners? How do they stand out? So uh, I mean, we've known each other for a long time, right? And yeah. so, <laughs> the <scale> uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, first and foremost, I think success breeds success. So I'm always someone that loves to start with where have you been successful with your customers? 
and tell those stories. More, more and more, we're all hearing these certain phrases in market, and it's sometimes hard to understand what one company is doing rather than another, because we're all using these catchphrases, but it's actually through the storytelling of the impact that you're having that it really illuminates uh, your value proposition, both to customers as well as to sales teams, if they're trying to identify who you are. So understanding what your superpower or your value prop is, if you're everything to everyone, you're no one to no one, mm -hmm. right? And so I often recommend uh, making sure that you start with your superpower. Sometimes it's better and far more effective to go in with something that is that turn on switch for customers or for the field, what you're known for. And you stand out from all of the competition because of that. And then you have those stories to complement it. And then you create heroes out of the sales teams with whom you're working, whether at your company or with your partner. And that breeds that success. Um, the other thing that I often talk about is, uh, is identifying key industries or sales plays where you shine, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, building your relationship with those stakeholders and making sure that you're going deep somewhere and then wide um, yeah. oftentimes is important. And then exploring um, the markets that you want to create, the customers you want. So Partnership, right? Um, we at Microsoft pride ourselves on trying to really offer a lot of opportunity to our partners. But likewise, the ones that really catch my attention are the ones that are also going out there and finding customers themselves. And then we're coming together because in the together, we're bringing even more success. And that really feels like a mutual success. Mm -hmm. um, in particular, if you're looking at our enterprise space at Microsoft, I keep going back to be known for something, right? Know your superpower uh, power, and engaging with the sellers. It will, it will, I almost say it's almost like a viral explosion when you start having ex success with certain sales reps. So start, as I said, in an industry, know your value proposition, get those customer success stories, and then make heroes out of those sellers. Um, that network effect is so powerful. And I guarantee you, if you want the attention of the sellers, getting someone that has been successful working with you is much more effective than even me going out and telling them about you. What a, what a phenomenal advice, Nina, because, you know, oftentimes it's hard to distill from, you know, executive talk as to what is actually practical and, and people should follow. Um, you know, very heartening to have you kind of describe that. And I think with uh, my key takeaway from your conversation is, Superpower, like workspan superpower is partnerships and ecosystems, right? We know what that is. Then, then apply it to a vertical, to an industry. Like we are focused exclusively on the high-tech industry and the surrounding industry to enable that workflow. And then create your own market, right? I love that piece of that advice. That before workspan arrived, we were thinking about channels in an old way. We were thinking about ecosystems. This is our new market. So as I apply your learning to ourselves, you know, we have to create the opportunity around the ecosystem market, especially in this decade of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And I believe such a story is there for everybody, especially with AI and uh, the platform capabilities now possible. Create your own future This and, and bring everybody along is, is a great advice. Yeah. Oh, wow. And now I want to pivot a little bit to you and the leader. I've known you for decades now. So Nina, always inspiring to talk to you. Uh, but in your role, you know, could you, ins you know, give us some insight as to how you're approaching managing your own team and what can we think about, you know, nurturing growth and, uh, you know, a growth mindset? Uh, how, how do you do this today in your own team? Well, we all hopefully know that nothing is possible without our teams, right? Yep. So we can talk about the numbers, we can point a North Star, we can get everyone rallied behind a common goal but it really comes down to investing in your people and making sure that they feel valued, respected. They each and every single one of them knows how they make a difference to the overall goals. I often talk about sometimes you have to slow down to speed up, right? Mm -hmm. You really do. Sometimes you have to just make sure that we're taking the time to provide the context to our teams 
the why behind the decision, not just the what yeah. and the game plan. And uh, I, I think as quickly as the market is moving and as quickly as all of our companies are trying to stay yeah. up to speed with the market, shall we say, um, it's important that we bring everyone along with us. Um, I, I do a lot of listening. That's the biggest change I think I've seen in the last five years. Mm. Uh, I, I have lots of ideas, but so do other people. And it's the collective experience that creates the leapfrog moment, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I really encourage all the voices to come out uh, for us to have ideation sessions, or sometimes I call them and stealing Disney's word, imagineering sessions, where people have the opportunity from, it doesn't matter what level. I'm not a very hierarchical person. I'm an idea-oriented impact person. So mm -hmm. making sure that you create those avenues where Anybody in the organization has the opportunity to be part of the ideation. Some of the best ideas mm -hmm. are, are found there. And then communication, communication often, all the mm -hmm. time, sharing your thoughts. And sometimes, honestly, I think I've become less focused on the exact word and trying to be manufactured and polished mm -hmm. rather being authentic. Right. So you, you, you find me a little bit more unbridled, um, more coming from my heart and my gut um, versus trying to make sure that I've used every buzzword or the perfect yeah. positioning of the sentence, because in that authenticity, people connect. Yeah. And that's really important at this time. Yeah, that's great authentic advice for all the partnership leaders out here. So, Nina, there's a movement in the industry that uh, we are part of and championing. That's to get 2,000 chief partner officers in the C-suite. And as these partnering leaders are developing, uh, you know, creating revenue impact and growth, I think it's also the human side that they have to manage larger and larger teams, create business impact by harnessing the value of that team, the impact of that team. So I, I take your advice uh, here for the larger community as well. Very well said. Bravo. Yeah. Uh, with that, uh, Chip, I want to bring you back in uh, for any audience questions we have, uh, especially the hard ones for Nina. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chip. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, yeah, some some interesting questions. Uh, uh, I think let me bring up this one. It was actually kind of directed at me, but 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 not exactly. It's sort of I think it was just a, a question overall. So uh about the roi for an isv since there are marketplace fees uh at offset by the sales cycle economics faster or less expensive too so i think that's a good that's a good question right there it's there are costs with uh with listing but there's so many advantages of co-selling and getting connected in with uh with microsoft field absolutely i'll even add to that chip um think about the cost the cost for customer acquisition that you currently have in your environment versus now having the opportunity to showcase your solutions to a much larger customer wrath that almost feels like an endorsement from that company, right? And then likewise at Microsoft, our sellers actually are encouraged to primarily transact through the marketplace. That's a big, important thing to think about. Mm -hmm. If they're being gold and compensated off of their marketplace transactions as well, they are proactively trying to introduce you into accounts and you're not even present sometimes. You don't even know about it. And then you're invited in. Think about having all of these people agitate and, and introduce you into accounts that you're not having to do that initial tick up, right? That to me is that X factor um, that marketplace can provide. That's that's great, and um, uh, and also it's just it's streamlined, right? You mentioned it earlier. It's like streamlining the process. If it's there, you can transact. Uh, you can transact more quickly, and and make uh, it makes it just easier to close the close the deal. Yeah, absolutely, and it keyed into the purchasing departments right away too. Right, <laughs> right? It makes, exactly. It makes a lot of things a lot easier. So. Yeah. Uh, this is not exactly a question, but I thought I just loved uh, hearing from Sanjay that, uh, you know, as a thank you for <laughs> <clears throat> your yeah. passion and sincerity come through and everything is, uh, and powerful team and people philosophy blown away. 
So thank yeah. you, Sanjay. Thanks. Thanks. Well, it's all about the people, you guys. Even our partnerships are all about the people. As much as we like to say we're all on Marketplace, it's a lot of people lending each other trust and then finding yeah. joint goals to move forward, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, maybe one last question here. Um, uh, yeah. What are some key topics that frequently come up in your conversation with other partners and customers? Well, Anna, you asked one of them, like, what's the key to success, right? Um, a lot of people are wondering what that magic sauce is. And uh, that that is what I shared today. Uh, I think people are also very curious about AI. Um, AI, I will tell you, is the number one door opener. Um, we mm. and our partner ecosystem, it every company is reaching out right now. Every CEO is asking their CTO or different areas of the business today, uh, what is our AI plan, right? And it's just, it's a different way of thinking about the space we're all in. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to position anymore. The AI conversation is what is opening the door, right? And then we have to have a conversation really around, are you ready as a company for what you wanna explore with AI? Um, and that's that's a real meaningful conversation today. I also like to get to very practical things. You know, you can you can work with customers and maybe you come up with 200 dream projects where AI can make a material difference. But it's about getting started with one, two, or three mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. make a material difference. And most importantly, to your employees as well, where they can feel and experience that change. And that's that's where things start to move and shake really quickly for companies. So I think that's another thing that I'm I'm constantly asked about. It's just how to get started with AI. You got to get your da data into the right place. You need to make sure it's secure. And that's exactly why I'm here at Microsoft. I, I feel like we're the best place to be able to offer our clients that. Um, Fantastic. Well, Terrific. thank you, Nina, so much. This has been a very engaging, exciting uh, session, and we really appreciate everything you do for the ecosystem. Uh, well, thank you, and thank you for our partnership as well. And yep. in all in all truth, just helping to bring transparency into how we work with so many partners as well. That's your that's your magic. Um, I really believe that that's your superpower. Is you offer companies that have good intent. Yeah the ability to work together with full transparency and trust in the data. So thank you for that. It's awesome. awesome. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, Nina. Thanks. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, Amit, Nina, I thank you both for, for, uh, sharing your, your thoughts and, um, and, uh, appreciate you joining us, Nina and, and, uh, fantastic. Great session. Take care. Thank you. Chip. Thank you. Thanks. Chip.